Hi there, and in today's blog I want to talk a little bit about relationships and that is quite topical at the moment uh, because for those of you that don't know there's been a story in the press about Alan Tudge and Christian Porter who've been having extra marital affairs and I guess it's controversial because these two in particular have been very ardent in their pushing for Christian family values and we should be holding to those values and of course they're the ones that are having these affairs uh, behind the backs uh, of their families and outside of the media. Um, and so you can imagine the hypocrisy in fact uh, on the Four Corners interview I think uh, Malcolm Turnbull who I really like for his command of the English language summed it up beautifully where he sort of said this whole situation is dripping with hypocrisy and uh, the pools are deepest at those who are most sacrimonious. Uh, beautiful language by Malcolm Turnbull there. You should watch it just for that quote, I think. But I want to really zoom out uh, about relationships in general because Again, on Q&A, Barnaby Joyce is sort of saying, well, you can't help who you fall in love with, you know? You can't dictate who you like and you dislike, and people do love many people at one time. So I want to talk about monogamy and how that is a trap for some people. Um, and I want to start with an interesting fact that human beings have been around on the planet for about a million years. Uh, and in most of that time, we've been, you know, polyamorous. Uh, in fact, in the animal world, monogamy is basically not heard of. Now, sure, a million years ago, we were closer probably to chimpanzees and bonobos, uh, which, by the way, are also incredibly polyamorous. They have sex with each other all the time. Uh, but for the last 300,000 years or so as hunter-gatherers we've been pretty much as we are now uh, homo sapiens and according to research clear studies show that monogamy only started around 10,000 years ago and it's at the point where clans went from being hunter-gatherers to owning property and the reasoning behind this is that if you own property then there's an advantage for you to then pass that property down to your children and so on. And especially when in-laws come in, uh, it's a way to help the elite maintain that uh, power, I guess, over top of the population by having in-laws that are likewise rich and powerful. But before that, uh, it was clear and it is clear in animal studies that having a tribe where there is polyamorism is an advantage because it brings a cohesive tribe uh, more than what you would think and I guess the reason for that is that if you don't if a man doesn't know which children are his then he's likely just to uh, treat all the children the same in the tribe and so uh, kids have many fathers and the whole tribe looks after them and that is an advantage in the cohesiveness of a tribe. So now that we are uh, having monogamous relationships in most of the world, uh, one reason why we're so terrible at it is because it's literally not in our DNA. You know, for the 99% of um, our you know, history, we have been polyamorous and it's only now that we are choosing to take uh, monogamous relationships. So I think that background in history is quite an interesting context, first of all, to think about that. But I think the main point I want to make, irrespective of whether someone chooses monogamy or polyamorous relationships, is that from a meditation point of view, uh, the goal clearly for reaching those high states of meditation is to let go of all attachment. And I believe this includes the attachment to how your relationship should be. Now, re Buddhism at any rate uh, suggests that our prime concern should be the happiness of ourselves and others. 
And so if you are with, an, a par, uh, with a partner who feels strongly that they would be happier in a other relationship or in a polyamorous relationship, then that perhaps should be the, the guiding principle uh, to allowing that person to be happy in whichever the way they choose to be. Now, I get that for many people they can't accept uh, perhaps sharing their partner with another person. And in that case, you know, you, people do take a vow uh, to stay with the one person and so one needs to honour that promise even though they're fighting against our DNA and our evolution. Uh, still that promise needs to be upheld because uh, as important is to not harm the other partner. But I think that this idea of monogamy, and by the way there are some people for which monogamy works perfectly and that is fantastic, but I think for a lot of people uh, they would be open to polyamorous relationships and in fact I believe there's probably more people out there that would be open to it than not and it's really just our culture and our upbringing to just, uh, we were taught to assume that everyone would be you know, extremely happy in just a, a monogamous relationship if they found their love when in fact if the culture was different and we grew up in a tribal setting for example where polyamorism was the norm then more people would accept that. Irrespective of that uh, I think that the most important thing is to be able to accept whatever happens. So those people who are polyamorous need to accept that some people prefer monogamy and likewise uh, for those people who feel because of their Christian beliefs or whatever that we should be monogamous, uh, if you also want to be a good meditator, you at least need to accept that that truth is relative and it may not apply to other people. Because let's face it, we do fall in love, we can fall in love with multiple people. And I don't believe it's true that just because you fall in love uh, with person B that you stop loving person A. You know, we love our mothers and our children and various people and if someone's also attractive to you then, then there's, there's going to be that also that desire for a relationship. So um, I guess I do uh, rile against uh, strong conservative values who put rules on how life should be and how people's minds should work because we are all different and um, I think that we should be more open to accepting those people who choose polyamorous relationships and in fact I think that that is actually constructive to meditation and being able to let go of attachment. Now where does all this lead? Because a lot of the monks choose to be celibate uh, which is very interesting and part of the reason is to get around, get away from all of these problems of jealousy and shame and all of that uh, around relationships. But I believe eventually, um, according to many um, traditions, that it is possible to actually take particularly sexual energy and bring it inside, uh, supposedly up through your chakras and turn it into you know bliss and love at the heart or even wisdom you know at the higher chakras and this sense of bliss can you know overcome and uh, be so much more than even the the pleasure we get from intimacy with other people so that's the goal uh, obviously I'm still on the path nowhere near there so I'm not preaching that uh, you know this is definitely the way uh, I'm in a journey with all of you as well but that is I guess my belief on the relationships and on meditation and how we can uh, look at the different relationships around the world and be accepting and therefore non-attached to how things should be and thus giving us the best chance to deepen our own meditation uh, state going forward. So let me know what your thoughts are on uh, monogamy and polyamorous relationships below and how it affects 
or doesn't affect your meditation. And I would love to uh, hear some questions or some opinions and create a two-way conversation. All the best.